picked up this old revolver. Just want to give you an idea of the condition of it here. You probably can't can't focus too well. It's a pretty nice shape. It's a nickel finish. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave that or not. Um, it's got the blue trigger guard. It's pretty well. The bluing's all gone off of it. Um, grips are in nice shape except for that little chip out on the bottom there. About all these I see have that. We'll see what a good cleaning does for this thing. Um, I'm going to tear it apart here. Hang on. Okay, guys. I've got this old uh, forehand arms revolver back on the bench here. I ran it through the Sonic Cleaner. And as you can see, it did a pretty nice job of cleaning it up. Um, it looks, the more I look at this, uh, it looks like it's been refinished. Somebody uh, nickel coated it at some point because I can see some pitting underneath the nickel and I don't think that uh, would be possible unless it was refinished at some point but it doesn't look too bad. Um, I'm going to stick with it. Um, I don't know if you can see that there but you can actually read the writing now if that's focusing I'm not sure um, but well you can see how clean everything I t after I uh, ran it through the sonic cleaner I just uh, dried it off and and then uh, took the carding wheel over it um, and if you're not familiar a carding wheel is just a real real fine uh, steel wheel it's almost like a a real fine steel wool and uh, I've got that mounted in my drill press and I just run this through it and uh, it doesn't take any metal off or anything but it cleans it up nice but uh, a lot of these parts I'm gonna blue the trigger guard was originally blued anyway I believe uh, the gun was nickeled and the trigger guard and the, and the trigger and the hammer were all blued so I'm gonna just uh, go ahead and do a cold blue on these parts here real quick and I've already soaked them uh, in some acetone and cleaned them good uh, and then I've got my gloves on now at this point you want to keep gloves on you don't want to touch it with your bare hands so one thing I like to do um, when I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. When I'm blowing parts, I like to heat them up. Seems like it takes the bluing a little better if they're a little warm. They don't have to be real hot, but. I still want to be able to handle them, so. on very long I think about a minute at the most and then you want to rinse it in cold water right away so steam coming off of it but it's okay I can still handle it see how it does on this trigger yeah that looks pretty nice
bit. I'm not sure if you can see it's probably off camera. I've got a uh, little dish with uh, some cold water in it here. Just dip them in there. Take some uh, four aught steel wool over it lightly. Just give it a little rub. Doesn't take much. Just getting off any excess stuff that might be on the surface there. dries on there sometimes, especially when you're heating the parts like I do. I'm using this Birchwood Casey uh, Perma, Perma Blue and it comes in a kit. You can get it in a kit and it comes with a degreaser. Um, so I like to use a little of that. I don't need it initially because I use the acetone, but I like to use it between coats. And you don't have to use the acetone. You can you can use this stuff instead. sure what the acetone would do to the fresh bluing is why I chose not to continue with that. And I'm not sure but I think this stuff is mostly uh, alcohol. It smells like it anyway. So it evaporates pretty quickly. All right, I think I got everything. You guys let me know if I missed something. All right, I'll heat it up again. Now you can do as many coats as you want to do on here. You just gotta, you know, it gets a little darker each time, and you just uh, keep going until you're satisfied with uh, with the color.
Okay, so we'll rinse it again. Like I say, you uh, should leave that on like 30 seconds to a minute. No more than that. Um, I have left it on a little longer. I don't know that it makes a lot of difference, but I don't know if you can tell, it's gotten a little bit darker. But I want this to be a little darker yet, so I'm going to continue here the same process. I'll dry it off. Uh, Take the steel wool over it, degrease it, do it all again, and uh, see how many times I have to do it here. But uh, I'll come back to you when I've got this all done, and we're going to put the gun back together. Hey guys, Magnum 68 here. I've got this old forehand arms double action revolver. Uh, I got it all finished up and back together. I I uh, I know I said I was going to tear it apart and, and show you the process, but I kind of got into it and, and, and decided I'd just go ahead and finish it up. I'll show it to you, and then I'll tear it apart for you here, just show you how it, how it comes apart. Um, but I run it through the Sonic Cleaner, and it cleaned up pretty nice. And, you know, a lot of times that's all it takes to get an old one functioning properly if it's having some issues. And as you can see... It's, I'm not having any problems with it now, and it's, it even holds in single action. So, a lot of times, uh, just lack of maintenance, lack of cleaning causes issues, uh, and uh, sometimes that's all it takes. So, I did that. Um, it cleaned up pretty nice. Then I, I did uh, clean up the uh, trigger guard and the trigger and, and re-blued those and uh, also the hammer um, and the grips I, I showed you had the the chunk missing out of the bottom I repaired those and what I used was agri-glass um, you can get that at Brownells I get it in the gel form uh, it's like a, a reinforced uh, epoxy and I just took that grip and I, I filled it in and then once it hardened up I actually waited till the next day and uh, just kind of sanded it down and formed it back into shape I put some black dye in it that comes with the kit also if you order that um, and it, it matched it perfect and you know if nobody told you you wouldn't even know that was done so quick easy fix there um, pretty happy with it so haven't fired it yet uh, don't know if I will might give it a try here one of these days it's, it's a pretty old revolver um, not sure the date on it. I have to check and figure out the date and see if it probably it eh, maybe might might have to go with black powder loads in this I'm not positive but we'll see uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and tear it apart. It's, it should come apart pretty easy because I just had it apart. So I'll start with the grips here. I'm kind of new to this video and thing, so I'm going to try my best to keep my big hands out of the way so you guys can see what's going on. But. out of the way now this is your main spring in here um, it just, it, there's a little notch up in there on the back side of the hammer that it sets into and uh, then it fits into this groove here so all I need to do is just take some of the pressure off and pull that right out And we'll go ahead and pull the hammer screw. And the hammer pulls right. 
that out. Oh, let's go ahead and pull the cylinder out of it. Probably should have done that first, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what you do is you push up. If you can see that, there's this little notch right here. Push up on that, and that pulls right out. And I re-blued that too, so it pulls right out, and then the cylinder comes out. And you can see how nice and clean everything got. I, I tell you. If you do any of this <laughs> on a regular basis at all, you really should get one of the Sonic cleaners. Got that at Brownells also, I think. You could probably find it on Amazon. Um, but it, it does a nice job of cleaning stuff up. So, go ahead and. usually like to start the pins with a brass punch. Just get them moving. If the brass isn't going to damage the metal on your gun as easily. Inside here is this little spring. And that is your trigger return spring. It sets, I don't know if you can see that groove in the bottom of the trigger there, but it sets up in there like that. And then when the trigger guard is on, it gives constant pressure pulling forward on that trigger. And that's what helps return your trigger. Now we'll go ahead and pull the trigger assembly out. pretty much it on this old gun. It comes apart that quick and that easy. Um, whoop. That's something you gotta watch. This is this is the hand. Um, hopefully you can see that. But that piece right there, you can see it's got this little spring attached to it here. that sets over Whoop, got it the wrong way sets over that pin there like that and that spring engages on the back right there and that's what gives it spring pressure for your hand to keep it forward. As the cylinder is rotating. See this goes up in there and it protrudes through if I can do that, yeah, probably not, but it 
protrudes through this slot right here. If you can see that. It's this little slot right here. And when you pull the trigger, that hand engages these notches here on the cylinder. And when you pull the trigger, it pushes that to rotate your cylinder. Okay, so every time you pull the trigger, it engages another notch, rotates the cylinder. When the trigger releases, it releases that spring tension and the hand slides back out of the way. We'll see if we can get this back together for you now. Put that back on like it was. You got to be take care to make sure it stays on while you're inserting this trigger. Sometimes this can be fun. Ah. And of course you gotta line the hole up in the trigger with the hole in the frame like that. I don't know if you can see, but the hand is protruding through the, shot, the slot there. That's what we want. Now, I didn't take that pin all the way out. Hopefully we can We got lucky. Okay. This little spring just fell out of here. I forgot about that. This goes in this hole right here. And what that does, once you tighten your trigger guard down, that gives you the spring pressure on this release right here. Okay. So get this back back in here. Like that. Backwards. Just gotta get the hole lined up there. Get the pin back in. I think it looks pretty good there for that front one. And then pretty easy. Shouldn't have to tap it too hard. If you do, there's probably something not lining up. Okay, and then the rear one lining up pretty good. Sometimes if it don't you can take a punch and kind of wiggle it around in there and get it to line up. But nice thing about this thing being totally clean uh, from the sonic cleaner it, it makes things a lot easier. Just like that. And if you can see the hand Let's get spring pressure on it. You can see that moving. We pull the trigger. Now, 
let's put the hammer back in. Pretty simple. Line up the hole. Drop in the screw. something engaged properly there so let's take that back out let's hold the trigger back while we insert that Bring back in, and like I say, I should have showed you while the hammer was out, but there's a little notch on the bottom. If you if you look up inside here, you can see where it goes right on the bottom of the hammer there. pretty easy but it slid out of the notch so actually that's probably the easiest way to put it in and then just slide that back until it engages in the notch and there we go working good now to put the cylinder back in of course make sure you put it in the, the right way the, the little notches here that the hand engage have to go the star there has to go toward the rear. And just put your cylinder pin back in. Get it lined up there. And you probably have to push up on this to release the tension. And slides back in. There it goes. All right. Now we'll just get the grips back on. Actually, let's put this. You can see there's a little stud sticking out there that your grip slides over that's what keeps it lined up right and the same way on this side put that in place That's all there is to it, guys. Uh, it's probably one of the easier ones. I've got several of these old revolvers I've been tinkering around with and just kind of learning as I go. And uh, This is probably the easiest one. Uh, none of them are too difficult, but this is probably the easiest one uh, that I've come across to tear down and put back together. Um, I, do, I wish I would have showed you the process on repairing that grip. I'm going to do another video. I have another one here. Now this one's got quite a bit more damage. You can see here, the other one just had a little bit out of the bottom, but this has got quite a bit more, big chunk missing out of it here. And I'm going to, 
attempt to repair that. I'm going to video for you guys. But I, at this point, I, I doubt if I'll be able to uh, get the grooves checkered back into this part. Um, I, I'm going to. These were black originally, and I ran this through the Sonic Cleaner, and uh, this is how they come out. So there's another little spot right there I want to fix too. Um, but. I'll probably uh, repair that and then paint them black and we'll see how it turns out but I'll show you the process just in case uh, anybody has has one that they want to tinker with so all right well again thanks for watching my video uh, I appreciate it and if you got anything out of this uh, uh, hit that like and subscribe button thank you